series of brilliant launches, the space team at Cape Kennedy runs into trouble. An Atlas Centaur rocket with a moon craft aboard fails just two seconds after blast off. Two of its engines cut out. It falls back and explodes. The test was to shoot a surveyor spacecraft to a point where the moon would be next fall. At that time, an attempt would be made to put a surveyor on the moon to make tests for a man landing. Although damage is estimated at $5 million, space officials are going ahead with the surveyor's chute. The launching crew in a blockhouse 1,200 feet from the blast were trapped for more than two hours while fires were extinguished. Because of the elaborate safety precautions at the base, no one was injured. The city of New Orleans, always young in spirit, hoops it up for Mardi Gras, the annual bash that precedes the austere days of Lent. Carnival is king, and speaking of kings, there are a score of monarchs reigning over their courts. From the king of Thoth to the king of Zeus, they all have their loyal following. Night and day, the merrymaking goes on. The Mardi Gras in New Orleans brings tourists from all parts of the nation. Visitors let inhibitions fall where they may. Eat, drink, and dance in the streets is the rule. And at famed jazz joints like Pete's Place. And for Pete's sake, who can blame them? In the days before Mardi Gras, there are parades honoring 19 kings and their crews. There's so much to see that most visitors try to stay up around the clock and say it's worth every headache. When the last band marches past and the last confetti is thrown, little old New Orleans will settle down once more. But they'll have plenty to talk about until next year. The people of the Netherlands West Indies welcome a royal visitor from across the sea. Princess Beatrix, heiress apparent to the Dutch throne, begins a three-week tour of this overseas possession with a visit to the children's orphanage. Though the Dutch have ruled here since 1634, it is rare that a member of the royal family is able to make such an extended visit. To help commemorate the occasion, the princess dedicates a new building of the Public Health Service, a major milestone in raising the standard of living here in the islands. Later, the princess places a wreath at a memorial that honors those soldiers from the islands who died in the service of the House of Orange. Tribute from the princess who will someday be queen. There is a treasure at Dordrecht in the Netherlands that is guarded behind these massive doors. A treasure that is unique among strange collections. Here there are thousands of locks, many of them odd affairs, and some that predate the Christian era. Some present their own puzzle. You tilt his hat. That's the first step. Next, you get the watchman to shake a leg, and the keyhole is revealed. Ancient locks were simple, so they tried to hide the keyhole. You touch the door panel to release a shield on this Italian safe. There was little chance of carrying this key home by mistake. To lock this story up, here's one from the 16th century that must have taken some unknown genius a lifetime to design. When you insert the key, a series of elaborate trip levers and pinions go into motion. It's complicated enough to do Rube Goldberg proud, but it did its job. And after all, that's the key to the whole thing. Closing day at Hialeah, and the Flamingos put on their show for the Miami crowd on hand for the Flamingo Stakes. This stake race is one of the curtain raises for the Kentucky Derby, but this year, two outstanding three-year-olds are missing because of injuries. Bold Lad and Sad Air sit it out as a field of 12 gets away. The crowd has made Hail to All the favorite, and running an easy third is Native Charger. That's where this son of the famed Native Dancer stays until he makes his stretch bid. Country Friend sets the early pace.
as they come around to go into the stretch, Native Charger makes his bid, moving up on the outside from third spot to first. Now he begins his rush to the wire as he fights off Sparkling Johnny. Favored Hail to Wall is running third and just can't make it. The race is worth $100,000 with $93,000 to the winner. And as they near the wire, Johnny Rotz calls on the Charger for one final effort. He goes down to the finish, pulling away to make it by half a length. Native Charger serves notice that he aims to be one of the best three-year-olds. 